Karen Jetley Life. Hi guys, welcome to my channel and today in this video we are going to discuss multiprocessor scheduling. So guys, in this lecture we will discuss what is multiprocessor scheduling and what are the different multiprocessor scheduling algorithms and I'll be taking some examples to explain them. So guys, for the full lecture all of you stay tuned. So guys, before we discuss multiprocessor scheduling, we will briefly discuss multiprocessor environment. So basically in multiprocessor environment, what is this? What we have is we have multiple processors. For example, I have processor 1, 2, 3, 3, 4, 5, 6 and all of them are connected to each other using an interconnect. So we have multiple processors and we have multiple processes. For example, here we have process A, B, C, D and we have process up to N. So in multiprocessor environment, we have multiple processors and which can run multiple processes on them. Okay. So, and what is multiprocessor scheduling? In multiprocessor scheduling, the scheduler has to decide on two things. First of all, which process it has to pick from the ready queue. All of, I, I hope all of you understand what is ready queue. So number first, which comes is which process it has to pick from the ready queue and number two and on which processor it will run that process okay so what is in multi processor scheduling in multi processor scheduling the scheduler has to decide two things first one is which process okay number two is which processor which processor for example first it has to decide so this is my ready queue on uh, from this ready queue which process it has to pick for example it picks process b that is the first decision the switch the multiprocessor scheduler has to take then when it picks process b now where it will run on these six processors that is the second decision Okay, and for multiprocessor scheduling, for a, for multiprocessor scheduling, we have different scheduling algorithms. Now, one by one, I'll be discussing them. So, first one is time sharing. Then we have space sharing. Then we have gang scheduling. So, I'll discuss all of them one by one. So, guys, the first scheduling algo which comes is called as time sharing scheduling algo right now in time sharing what happens this is a very very simple scheduling algorithm it is very similar to the priority scheduling but in this it is very much effective if we have different processes which are not related to each other means if they are not part of the same program so then this scheduling is very easy to implement okay so now what happens in this is we have multiple processors for example here i have one two three four five six processors and we have multiple processors i have processors from a to i and all these processes they have some priority they all have some priority for example a b c they have the highest priority d e they come after that and process i has the lowest priority and all these processes are not related to each other means they are not exchanging any input or output okay all these are processes are non-related processes by non-related processes i mean they all can run independently they all can run independently without exchanging any data or value between each other so when we have this type of environment, when we have multiple processes which are independent of each other and they all have some level of priority. So in that case, we can do time sharing scheduling. Okay. So in time sharing, what happens? Now suppose these are my different processors. Okay. For example, after some time, my processor one becomes free. Processor one becomes free. Then it will see this ready queue. It will see the list of ready queue. It will go to the highest priority and it will pick one process from the higher, uh, highest priority and it will start executing it. For example, in this, which is the higher, higher pr high priority process number six, that is A. So what it will do, processor one scheduler will pick process A and it will execute process A on processor one. Okay, so 
this is the process which we picked this is the processor which we picked okay so then again after some time suppose processor 6 becomes free so then what scheduler will do it will look for the second process which has the same level of priority so it will pick process b and it will execute process b on processor number six so after some time this became free so it will pick this process c and it will execute on this processor and so on so this scheduling is similar to as i told you priority scheduling very easy to implement very easy to implement but it has a problem but it has a problem so in case the processes are interacting or dependent upon each other then it makes this scheduling as very very complicated okay other than this since it is based on priority scheduling right it is based upon priority so in in that case some processes which have low priority they may starve they may start for example here we finished a b and c now we should start with d and e in case some other process comes j which has the same priority 6 then instead of taking these processes we have to execute process j this is one problem another problem is in case the processes they are interacting or they are exchanging data between each other then this scheduling is not very much feasible then the scheduling is not very much feasible but when the processes are unrelated then this is a very very effective and easy scheduling we call it as time sharing scheduling so guys i hope you understand it so next scheduling which comes is called as space sharing is called as space sharing so guys, space sharing scheduling is the scheduling which is good when the processes are related with each other. By related with each other, I mean when the processes, they are dependent upon each other. When they are exchanging data or inputs or outputs between each other. Now we will discuss space sharing in detail. So guys, in space sharing scheduling, so what happens is we schedule the processes which are related all together at the same time we execute them at the same time as i told you space sharing scheduling is good when the processors are depend processes are dependent upon each other for example now here we have three processes a b and c we th all three are related to each other all three are related to each other means they are communicating with each other then we have processes D and E, they are related to each other, means they are exchanging data between each other. And then we have processes F and G, they are also related to each other. So guys, in this scheduling, what happens? When a processes are created, which are related to each other, then the scheduler checks whether I have so many free number of processors or not okay if it has free number of processors then all those related processes are executed on all those processors at the same time for example now we process a b c and a b and c are created now the scheduler will look if do i have three free processors now in case suppose all my processors are free so then what will i do is what the scheduler will do it will see okay three processors and i have three processors so it will allocate these processors to these three processors a b and c and all will run at the same time and what is the advantage of all of them running at the same time means in case they are doing any input output or in case they are communicating they can communicate with each other and there is no need for context switching okay so then again for example again two processes are created that is d and e so when d and d are created again my scheduler will check whether how many processors are the processes are there two it will check whether I have two free processors or not. If I have it, then again, those will be allocated to those 
processors for example now again i have how many processors three four five and six d and e are created so these two will be assigned here now what happens after sometimes now the abc is executing here and d and e are executing here all are happening at the same time after some time again processor f and g are created again my scheduler will check whether i have two free processors or not now in this case i do not have two free processor so then what will happen it will wait until all of these processes they finish their execution for example after some time okay a b and c have finished okay so then i have enough number of processors which can be assigned to them then again f and g will be allocated to them so this type of scheduling is called as space sharing scheduling so basically space sharing scheduling is good for the processes which are related to each other so it is always a good idea to execute all of them at the same time i hope guys that is clear and there is a disadvantage of this scheduling the main disadvantage of this scheduling is for example we have two processes f and g okay so as i told you they both will be executed at the same time now in case process f has finished the execution okay and g is still running the g is still running in that case the processor this processor number 1 will not be released until all the processes they finish the execution so until all the until for example f finished no one is idle but g is part of f g is still running okay until g finishes its execution processor 1 will also not be available for some other processes okay so this is the disadvantage of this scheduling so guys i hope it is clear so the next scheduling which comes is called as gang scheduling is called as gang gang scheduling so gang scheduling is also similar to the previous one but it it is slightly modified version of space sharing scheduling so we'll discuss that now so guys the last scheduling which comes is gang scheduling so in gang scheduling what happens okay before we discuss gang scheduling we'll go to the previous scheduling called as space sharing so in space sharing what was happening if one of the processors have finished then the cpu the processor allocated to that process will wait until all the related threads they finish the execution so which used to waste lot of time of the processor okay now to overcome that problem so we have something called as gang scheduling so gang scheduling is a combination of ganging and round robin scheduling so what happens in gang scheduling in gang scheduling is we join okay or we join the related processors together as single gang okay you if you remember processes a b and c are related to each other so we'll combine them together to make one gang and we have processes d e and f they are also related so we will group them together in another gang so this is gang 1 this is gang 2 now in gang scheduling what happens we divide the cpu time into time slices we divide the cpu time into time slices so we give one time slice to each gang okay so each gang will execute for that period of time when the time slice is over then the next gang will execute and so on so the advantage of this scheduling is so the processors have the the processors become free after they finish the time slice but in the previous case what was there even if the process uh, is free it has to wait until all of the related threads they finish in this case 
So what happens is the processor become available when the time slot of the GAN or of that related processes are over. For example, here I have process A, B and C. So at time 0, I allocate A here, B here, C here and D, E, F to this processor. D to number 4, E to number 5, F to number 6. So they will do their execution. So when this time slice is over, then this time slice is over. So then the processors are allocated to some other gang. They are allocated to some other gang. For example, X, Y, Z, P, Q, R. So X, Y, Z, P, Q, R will execute. Okay. And when their time is over, then their time is over. And in case still a, B, C, D, E and F, they need processor. Again, they will be allocated the processors. Then again, first I can say it is it was A1 first execution or A0, B0, C0, D0, E0, F0. Now the second execution, A1, B1, C1, D1, E1 and Okay, again after the time slide, again in case this X, Y, Z, P, Q, R, this gang needs the processor again, well, it will come. So, the, instead of allocating the processor from beginning till end of the execution, here we are allocating the processor to the different gangs for a fixed amount of time. We call it as time slices. It is similar to your round robin scheduling. Here the processor time is shared between the different gangs. Okay. So guys, this scheduling is called as gang scheduling. It is a slight improvement over the, not slight, it is a hell lot of improvement over the space sharing scheduling. Okay. So guys, I hope I made myself clear and I hope you understand these three scheduling algorithms for uh, multiprocessor scheduling and i'll be uploading more and more advanced operating system lectures so guys thanks for watching and all of you stay tuned for the next video okay and most important if you like our videos please subscribe to my channel